Hi, I'm Jervis Lewis, and in this video I'm going to show you how to assemble an image sequence in Photoshop. I didn't even know Photoshop had that capability until I was working on an animation that was larger than 1080 by 1920, and I was traditionally using Premiere Pro to do that, but my version of Premiere Pro is now a few years old, and while it can handle larger resolution than 1080p for editing, sadly it can't export anything higher than 1920 by 1080 So I was looking elsewhere and there it was, right, built into Photoshop. Who would have thought? Um, I'm going to use Photoshop CC 2017. Quite hilarious, isn't it? 2016 was such a bad year that even Adobe haven't released the Photoshop 2016 update. It went right from 2015.1, 2015.5, and then went right onto 2017. That's awesome stuff. Anyway, uh, let's jump right in and open Photoshop here. And it is really very simple. It's just not very intuitive or it's not, not really advertised as such. So uh, what we do is we head over to the um, file dialog or use the big fat open button here. Either will work fine. And it appears it's just as, as easy as opening in uh, a single image for that. So mine's in here, tree animation. Three, four. So all you need to do is pick any of your of your images in the sequence. It's important that they're numbered sequentially. I'm going to choose the first one because I'm like a belt and braces kind of guy. Uh, also, make sure you only select a single image. Don't select the whole sequence, just a single picture. Very important. And then on the bottom left here, there's the options button and that's very important to open that because if you do then you get this option here that says image sequence who would have thought let's tick that and Photoshop will go ahead and open the whole sequence well first it'll ask us what frame rate was this made at because obviously that's something that Photoshop can't see so mine was indeed 24 frames a second but you can you can pick anything you like or pick a custom frame rate here so 24 in my case is fine I'll click OK and what Photoshop's now done is it has created a video layer here on the right hand side. And that's a little bit like a 3D layer. It's kind of a, a normal layer. It's a group. You can close it here as well. Somehow you can't close it. Okay, cool. So you can't close it. But this layer is basically your whole sequence. And it's displayed over here on the layers palette just in case it's not showing on your system you can head over to a window and uh, just open that here likewise with another tool that uh, is needed for the um, for the kind of little bit of editing that we're going to be doing inside photoshop is the timeline now usually that's collapsed down here and you think well where is the timeline and it's just a tab double click it and then it'll expand it and it'll look like this at the bottom here if again if it's not showing it's under window and uh, open the timeline here now this is important our whole sequence and with the space bar just like in premiere we can we can play this at a fairly you know blocky kind of playback but that's cool that the fairly high res file so uh, uh, Photoshop will even tell you here at the bottom left what the current frame rate is that it's playing it back at so and um, we're not too concerned about fluid playback here right now what I do want to do though it's a, in my case it's a 250 frame animation and uh, I would like to duplicate that a few times and in uh, Premiere of course that's very easy you just assemble it onto one sequence and then you import that sequence into another sequence and just chug it along and then add a fade in and fade out so that it looks quite funky and we can do the same thing here in Photoshop as well but we don't do that from the timeline down here we do that from the layers palette so um, what we need to do in order to duplicate all our frames uh, provided it is a seamless animation a loopable animation which in my case it is you select the layer and you hold down your alt key and then uh, left click and drag down just like duplicating another layer and um, sadly I've dragged a little bit too much it is uh, it, it is now um, duplicated as you can see in the timeline I have two of these tracks and I can either drag the bottom track next to the top track or even easier I can just make sure that this layer stays in the same group so again you can hold it clicked and just make sure that this little line here, you see that line underneath the previous layer displays and then you let go 
and uh, now it's in the same group so it's on the same with the same indentation here and uh, there we go this is our first clip this is our second clip so let's see what happens when we just play over it. Hey, seamless animation. That's very cool. Look at that. Uh, playback does actually speed up once Photoshop's gone through the, the images, I guess, cached it or whatever. Does optimizations in the background. So that's, that's good to know. Now I want to have about two minutes worth of an animation. And that means I'm going to have to duplicate my thing here about... Uh, five times perhaps, like so. There we go. Um, that's that. I've got a long looping animation and uh, perhaps now I want to add a fade in and a fade out. So let's do that as well. Photoshop can do that. It's quite, it's quite funky. I'm very impressed by this feature. It's very exciting. That means I don't have to go to another um, application and figure out how to assemble an image because it's very exciting. So um, here we go. This is the little gear, I sorry, not the gear icon. It's the little black and white icon here that says select a transition and drag to apply. So first of all, we click on it and then we have a little menu here to pick what type of transition we'd like to apply. A fade is the usual fade from one clip into another. Cross fade is kind of the same thing. I suppose one is an add, one is a, one is a, um, one is a linear one. Uh, fade to white, fade with color. I'm going to use the fade to black one. So select one and then from this little item here that is selected, left click and drag. And you can see this little icon that appears here. Drag it right onto your timeline, onto the part of the clip that you'd like to apply this transition on. And this little outline appears, let go and there's your transition. Let's preview this by putting our playhead into position. Yes, nicely faded in. Okay, let's do the same thing at the end of the clip. Let's scroll right uh, to that, and we'll do the same thing. I don't think we can we can drag this thing. Now we have to click it, pick the transition, and drag that transition right out. Drop it here. A little preview, and see my animation fade out. Perfect. So we've imported the image sequence, we've duplicated a few times, we've added a top and tail, fade in, fade out. Now let's export this. And uh, again, very easy. Head over to File, Export, somewhere. I've seen it. Uh, export, there we go. And at the bottom here, Render Video. And if you do that, a fairly familiar dialog comes up that reminds me a little bit of what happens in uh, Premiere. So you can set a few options here. They're not as extensive as in Premiere, but it's certainly good enough to um, tell you the document resolution, the pixel aspect ratio, what type of um, preset you want to use. So you do still have lots of options to choose from here. I will leave everything as it is, and I'm just going to select the folder. That's cool. So I'll just call this tree four because I think that was what the animation was called. Hit render, and then Photoshop will go to work rendering this out at the codec and the parameters that I've specified. Okay, that's done it. Let's have a look at it. it should be on my desktop. There it is, tree four. See what it looks like. Nicely done, Photoshop. Thank you very much. Another hypno tree animation. Awesome. And that's it. I hope this was helpful. If you like this video, please share it with friends, family and total strangers. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye for now. I will see you next time.